So yeah, 2023 has been quite an emotional roller coaster. So I basically have been struggling to get a GP face to face appointment. I don't even care if it had been a video face to face video call appointment for the last two to three years. So from 2020 to January 2023. I mentally begged them. I said, look, we all know that you've got vulnerable sections, elderly sections, disabled sections. We know you've got that where you can put people, book them an appointment, counsel it by text if you need to counsel it, and then book a new appointment. I said I, I've... Basically, since the pandemic, I've also, I, I don't, I have so m- less headspace. So, I don't really like using the phone. I, I am much better face to face, or by email or text message. I don't like using the phone. I really, really, really do struggle with it. And literally, in the three years. So this January, I managed to be on a mental high and I managed to make a phone call on the 4th of January, 2023. And I got an appointment with Goldington. And the doctor was five or six minutes late, wasn't wearing a face mask. Um, I had to repeat why I wanted the referral to MSK Circle. So that twice, that took about maybe two, three minutes out of the 10 minute consultation. Then I said, look, I'm also running out of the pain patches I've made. So I had a surplus supply and I said in, July 2022 by email, twice. I don't have yearly pain drug reviews here with a pain management MSK cycle pain specialist. And you're also refusing to book a GP appointment. If you don't book it by a certain time, I'm going to use two seven-day patches because the pain has increased. And I can explain why the pain has increased. So I said this in an email twice in July 2022 and so in January 2023 I said I'm now reaching the period where I will be running out of the surplus and the emergency and the backstop of pain patches that I had and I will be going over 30 micrograms per hour back down to 15 micrograms per hour or I'm asking the GP to give me 20 micrograms per hour pain patch and a 10 micrograms per pain patch instead of two 15s like I had I'd been on it safely it was helping with the pain it was a safe and secure method I got labeled a drug addict by this doctor I'm wearing my my bollocks, not bollocks, that's the wrong one. I've got two face masks. I'm wearing my fuck Boris face mask, basically. I haven't washed for 30 days, probably. I've got a long beard of growth. And I am a bit agitated because I'm like, I haven't seen the GP for, for three years. All my GPs that knew me have left. That was free. My main GP left in the pandemic. I also know that the GP that triggered and caused my nervous breakdown at Pembley Surgery on the 19th of September 2016 also had joined Goldington Avenue stroke Union Street Clinic partnership to Goldington Avenue in Bedford sometime 
in 2020 or 2021 and I was filling out my personal independence payment form and I I don't know the postcode off by heart telephone number and everything like that and the full address and so I go on the website that's when I found out in 2020 or 2021 my GP's gone okay I know the normal standard practice now is we don't tell you and we don't tell you who your new GP is and we don't even try and make an assessment that your new GP should see you in person this is done across the whole of the GP practices it's across the board in the UK so it's not just specific to Bedford I find out not only has my GP left and they've not told me and they haven't told me who my new GP is and they also haven't brought me in to have an assessment with my new GP I find out the old GP from Pemberley Surgery that caused my nervous breakdown on the 19th of September 2016 at Pemberley Surgery on my third appointment within less than 10 minutes I had joined this practice so I said to the GP practice by email I've ex- explained what's happened and how I've come across this they said don't worry Mr Reynolds don't worry Scott it was such a long time ago nothing will affect your treatment here yet it has It all went cold after that. Booking appointments. I was told no face-to-face booking appointments at either either site, either at Goldington or Union Street or the the second practice they had before they got Union Street, Rossway. They said you can only book appointments by phone 7am to 8.59 it never used to be that way. I could go in person. I could say, look, I'd like to book an appointment. They'd send me a text. It all stopped, basically. Um, so I, I suffer low to mild asthma. And I got my flu jab in 2020 at the practice. 21, 22 flu jab blocked told I can't have it at the practice so I did have it at the local chemist for 2021 I didn't manage 2022 and I normally don't have the flu jab because mentally I just can't get to GPs I sometimes can't keep that appointment yet when I have had a flu at home and I haven't had the flu jab, it's lasted weeks. And with the coronavirus being about, I decided to get more flu jabs and make it a, a must-have. Anyway, Goldington, as of 2021-2022, said you can't have these jabs. We can't see history of asthma. It's like, well, I sent you history of asthma. You just don't want me on site in person, randomly turning up in case the Pembley surgery doctor's there. And so it's all been a bit shit by Goldington. And Goldington basically have... Like, you should never discharge a patient without sending them a text message and an email. Not just posts. Especially when you know you've been told mentally I can't open post at the moment. I've got so little headspace in my head. Especially when you took me off a drug that I've been on for 13 years at 224 a month. I can't stockpile Zappa pain, Cocodamol, Tylex, whatever you want to call it. Because I take 6 to 10 tablets a day. Zappa pain, 
was my main painkiller outside of the pain patch, my main opiate. And I've been on the opiate up until January, and then they stopped it in February. They didn't. They didn't bother asking whether I was a suicidal threat by East London Foundation Trust psychiatrists. They didn't bother to ask if that was my normal pattern. I've only tried to overdose when I fucking can't get a razor blade. And guess what? If I've only got four Tylex left that week, that day, that hour, then that would be what I'd overdose on. If I have 10, that's all I would overdose on. So 2007, 2010, and 2017 is the only time I've overdosed on opiates. That was because I couldn't either find a bridge, speeding traffic, or I couldn't get into the facial razor blades and I couldn't bite it through my teeth and just hack the right arm apart and let it bleed out. I've been on the drug safely, apart from three suicidal attempts, because I don't choose that method other than the last result. Yet because Goldington wanted to, that doctor wanted to call me a drug addict and Plyo was a drug addict, she did not want to continue prescribing that opiate. So she took me off of it as of February 2023. I'd been on that dosage, 224 a month, six to eight or 10 tablets a day. Some days it's four to six, four to three, because Mathematically, 224 divided by 30 days or on an average month is 7.7 tablets a day. Not only has my, so from 2010-ish, I don't know exactly when in 2010, it's a long time ago, to January 2023, I was on 224 Zapapain, Tylex, or Cocodamol a day as my main painkiller. And I would take anywhere between 6, 8, or 10. This was approved by a long-term pain specialist that knew me from 2009 to 2017. And we had a yearly drug review. We yearly checked these drugs he knew that i was suicidal he knew that i had borderline personality disorder he knew that i had major depressive disorder he knew that my main suicidal attempts were this he did not fear me overdosing and taking away my tablets because that would increase the suicidal risks and increase my pain and increase my suffering. Not only had it been approved by a long-term pain specialist from London, 2009 to 2017, with a yearly drug review every year, it was also approved by my GP at the time, 2010 to 2016 in London. It was it, it was not disputed ever by Luton and Dunstable, two pain specialists that were bloody dreadful. It was not disputed by two MSK circle pain specialists either or old GP. 